An aneurysm is a weakening or a bulge in the artery that can occur in any part of, the, uh, of any artery, but we're talking today about the aorta, which is of course the, the arteries, the body's main artery, carries a tremendous amount of blood flow. So the implications of any rupture or leakage from an aneurysm are life-threatening and potentially disastrous. Here we see the thoracic aortic aneurysm. This is defined by the area of the aorta between the uh, left subclavian artery and the diaphragm. This entity is diagnosed in between 15 and 25,000 people in the United States every year. And the incidence is increasing because we have an increasing uh, age of our population and also because the screening tests are much more available. These things are caused by degenerative diseases in uh, over four-fifths of patients. About a fifth of patients have what are called aortic dissection, which is a tear in the lining of the artery, which occurs in patients with hypertension and other disorders. The remainder occur because of connective tissue problems or rare infections. This graph nicely shows the impact of treatment on these, on these patients. <clears throat> in the blue dotted line, you see what happens to patients with aneurysms who are not treated over time. And you can see that the vast majority of patients don't survive three or four or five years. In contrast, those in the red line who are treated with surgery have a far different survival curve and really that they are returned to the, the survival curve expected for the uh, general population. Risk factors for developing aneurysms are shown here and they include increasing age, high blood pressure, cigarette smoking, hardening of the arteries or arteriosclerosis and of course a family history of aneurysms. We screen for these uh, entities by using chest x-ray and a variety of increasingly sophisticated imaging techniques including magnetic, magnetic resonance imaging, uh, computed tomography, uh, angiography still has a role, and transesophageal echocardiogram is very useful especially for the ascending aorta. Repair for these is recommended when they reach a maximal diameter of five or six centimeters or when they grow significantly between imaging studies. Certainly when any symptoms develop, or a dissection occurs, emergency surgery would be indicated. And smaller aneurysms can be considered for repair, especially if they are demonstrated to grow rapidly. Treatment options occur, uh, include medical management or monitoring, so-called watchful waiting. If this is going to be chosen for an individual patient, it's important that strict interval surveillance with imaging studies be employed to prevent anybody from getting uh, in a dangerous uh, area with their aneurysm without us knowing it. Open surgical repair is another option. And what we're talking about today is the exciting new ter therapy of an endovascular stent graft repair. The open repair has with it 50 years of history. We, it requires a large left chest incision. The aneurysm is replaced with a Dacron tube graft. It does carry significant risk of mortality and uh, significant morbidity. The endovascular repair, by contrast, uh, requires access through a, uh, an artery in the groin or the iliac artery. These grafts are deployed using angiographic guidance. Uh, they require anchoring of the device in relatively normal areas of the aorta above and below the aneurysm. The principle is that of a tube-shaped stent graft uh, that relines the vessel and diverts the blood through the stent graft and, uh, and away from the aneurysm. The aneurysm is thus excluded and depressurized and usually shrinks in size or clots off. 